Assalamualaikum. In this video, we're going to learn some basic servlets for web application in Java E. So, in this topic, we are going to cover six subtopics as shown in the screen. So, the first one we're going to discuss about Java web technology. Second, about web and HTTP. Third, HTTP request and response. Fourth, what are the servlets? Fifth, the servlet architecture. Six, the servlet request and response. So before we jump into servlet, let me introduce you the fundamental of web. Web contains billions of server and clients connected through wires and wireless network. First, web client make a request to the web server to the internet. Web server receive the request and process it through resources and return the response to the client. So the response could be something like content to the client. For example, you want to open your ITM web page. The moment you type the URL www.uitm.edu.my at the browser, the request is sent from the client to the browser. Then, when the browser displays the home page of the ITM, that is when the server sends the response back to the client. So the response is in the form of HTML page with HTML tags. All kind of browser know how to display HTML pages. Next, let's move on to web and HTTP. So what is web applications? So basically, website contains static web pages such as HTML pages, images, and web application contain dynamic functionality on the server such as Google, Twitter, Instagram, and etc. Now, what is the relationship between web and HTTP? HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's a protocol that a clients and server use on the web to communicate each other. Next, let's look at HTTP request and response in the web. So basically what happened is when a client send a HTTP request to the server, the server will answer with HTML through the HTTP response. The request can be used using variety of methods and the one that is mostly used is GET and POST. So the method tells the server what is request being made and how the response message will be formatted. Next, let's look at the difference between HTTP GET and POST method. So for HTTP GET, the data is sent in header, but for HTTP POST, the data is sent in request body. HTTP GET can send limited data, but in case of POST, large amount data can be sent. The GET request is not secure because the data is exposed in the URL but POST request is secure because the data is not exposed in the URL. GET request can be more marked and more efficient and on the other hand, POST request cannot be more marked. So these are the differences between GET and request and POST request via HTTP. So now you have understood the concept of WAC. Next, I will introduce the concept of servlet and what servlet does. So servlet can be described in many ways depending on the context. Servlet is a technology to create web application. It is an API that provides many classes and interface during documentation. Servlet is an interface that must be implemented to create any servlet. It is also a class that extends the capability of the server and responds to any incoming requests. The main thing is, servlet can respond to any request and it is a component of server that can be deployed to create dynamic web pages. Servlet also is robust and scalable in web technology. Next, let's move on to the the screen so you can see that client send a request to the server and the server will process the request into response in a form of formatted pages at runtime and the response is sent back to the client so this is basically how servlet works on the web 
Now let's move further and understand the architecture of servlet. Here you can see the web browser send request to the server and the server send response back to the web browser. So what actually servlet program does? So it performs various tasks. First, it processes the explicit data sent by the client, then include HTML forms and etc. Second, it processes the data from the client and generate results. This process requires communicating to database. After processing the data, it sends the data into various formats such as HTML, JSP, and etc. to the web browser. Now let's look at the servlet lifecycle. First, loading the servlet. When the browser starts open a URL, the servlet will load an instantiate object and attribute in the servlet program. Then, the servlet is initialized by calling init method. The init method is called by a servlet container to indicate that servlet instances instantiate successfully and will put the servlet into server. Then, servlet will call the service method to process the client uh, request. So, this service method is invoked to handle the client request. Finally, the servlet is terminated by calling the destroy method. Destroy method runs only once in servlet lifecycle. Remember that init and destroy method are called only once time the servlet cycle. Now let's look further about two important methods in servlet. That are servlet requests and servlet response. First, when a client sends a request to the web browser, the servlet container creates servlet requests and response object and pass them as argument to the service method. So the request object provides access to request information such as header and body information of the request data. For servlet response, the servlet container that connected to the web server will proceed with the HTTP request in a certain pool. When a client sends a request to the web server, the servlet container creates servlet request and response object and passes them as argument to the servlet service method. So the respond object allow you to format object and send back to the client. That's all now um, for the servlet. So for more detail on servlet for web development, please read chapter 3 minus 1 in my Google site. Thank you.